All right, it's great to be here. I think we live in a fantastic time, and it's really exciting um, that you know finally we can build things like this. And I'm going to talk about the Hologate in a bit. So I just want to say, um, so basically my background is uh, working in computer graphics for about 20 years, and I've worked on all kind of media from uh, visual effects for a feature film to interactive installations and games and whatnot. And so uh, my company has been involved with quite a few projects over the years as well. And so it's more and more moving into real-time rendered pictures. So um, <laughs> I want to ask you, who has experienced VR in the 90s? Maybe if you could just put your arm up. Anyone in the 90s? No one? So I want to show you something. So this is, this is basically 1993. And this is how I got into VR the first time. And it was a multiplayer system where four people could play together. It was based on an Amiga 3000. It was called Virtuality. And there was guys in, in the UK building this, and they were spreading this all over the world. Maybe when you see it, you've seen that before. It's quite interesting, because it was a bit like even eSports and virtual reality sports already happening at that time. And people were competitively playing. And that was basically in the early 90s. And that's when I really got into this. And I was like, wow, I want to work in this industry, which was non-existent. And now about like 25 years later, there is actually something um, to this industry. So I feel like what is happening today? So we're moving from, that's people, what people say at the moment, we're moving from the age of information to the age of experience. So it's a lot about not just what you accumulate, but basically if you look at Instagram and Facebook and these sort of things, it's all about live streaming and what's happening right at the moment and what's happening now. Um, so, talking about AR and VR platforms, so there is a huge need basically for platforms like immersive platforms for enterprise and entertainment use. And the funny thing is that I feel that there is a lot of crossover. So, like gamification and, and things like that. So, we, um, we developed uh, an experience for Audi, um, which is, uh, yeah, basically you can walk around freely in a pit stop for about 90 seconds and they're using this in a sales tool. So Audi has a sales tool that um, basically where you can configure and uh, show or like see any car in any configuration and they're rolling this out now to like hundreds of their dealerships. So they're basically building a platform that they can uh, show their content on and it's, it's funny so it's not just I'm talking about content so it's really a sales tool but at the same time they're using experiences like this which is a brand experience to show what the brand is all about and basically get an emotional response from customers. So, you know, when I said there's a bit of crossover, this is where the crossover happens. So if you look in the history of film, and I think that we're basically at that step with virtual and augmented reality at the moment, the Lumiere brothers, they invented the yeah, first cameras and they showcased that in Paris. And this, they also built the first cinemas, right? And so cinemas, was, cinemas is location-based entertainment. So um, people you know, have, have gone to cinemas for, for centuries. And if you look at it like, okay, so the first thing they showed was a, an arriving train, which is quite similar to actually the arriving car in the Le Mans pit stop that, that we did for Audi. I just think it's a bit of a funny coincidence. So I'm saying, Guys, this is only at 1%, right? We can do much more. Like, we will do much more than that. And so you have to think about what's going to happen and what's going to come in the next few years. So the problem is at the moment that most people don't have really the space to get a nice VR or AR experience at home. And it's too expensive and it's too difficult to set up. And it's isolating when you do it by yourself because people can't really participate or you can't do anything together or it would be very difficult or even more difficult to basically do that. So the solution really is that you have VR or AR or immersive platforms that allow you know, people to interact together and play together and do things together. And that could also cross over into enterprise. Right? So what is location-based entertainment? So if you look at location-based entertainment, so there really is a lot of locations that would allow for this. right? And they're already existing. So the two most important um, verticals they're really family entertainment centers and cinemas. This is a huge platform. So there's thousands of venues like that, especially in the US. Um, like family entertainment centers is basically, you know, an accumulation of attractions. So they take, um, you know, laser tag and bowling and mini golf and some climbing and things like that and build centers around that. And then, yeah, it's called the family entertainment center. So it's like a mini theme park if you want. And then obviously, so all of the other locations are interesting for, for location-based entertainment, and it's very, very similar. 
So the market size of this is growing intense. So VR gaming obviously is estimated at, as, as becoming a, a huge industry. And the same goes for basically the two uh, important verticals that you see. Um, it's growing and it's growing crazy. So if you look at like what's kind of happening here, so this is, there is a website called Varnish or Varnish. And so they're tracking locations of um, VR arcades and VR entertainment. And so there you can see that basically the increase is, yeah, it's, it's steadily increasing and it's kind of exploding at the moment. So if you look at, so they're also rating the, um, the venues of what they actually offer and what they do. So um, mostly it's arcade sort of type uh, venues at the moment. And so there's a few cinemas and there's a few escape rooms. I don't know if you're familiar with escape rooms. It's basically you play together in a team and it's a puzzle. So you're in an actual room and you play together and you have to solve the puzzle. And this is really popular now all over the world. And so this is also for VR, it's very interesting. And there, there, yeah, there's a huge interest really to build VR rooms because you can reuse them and you can have different puzzles and you can also, if you can work together, this is great. And so yeah, multi-type is just um, mixed sort of things between this. And I think that basically the arcade uh, venues, they will go down and there will be much more cinemas and there will be more escape rooms, especially cinemas will go up. So, but this is big, um, basically this is, uh, yeah, big companies. So they, it, it will take some time to catch on and to offer the right solutions. So what uh, my company is involved with is um, the Hologate. And so Hologate is a, basically it's a multiplayer, multi-user solution that is um, easily accessible and you can operate it with a touch screen. And so four people can uh, play and interact and uh, do something together in, in VR. And so the great thing about that is that we do have a venue here in Munich, which is our first, and, um, first site and beta site as well. We also have one in LA and we're selling several units uh, throughout Europe and the US in the next few months. So there will be more locations. And so the great thing about it is really that um, so last night we had a little bit of a pre-party for AWE, and so I had uh, a, a, you know I got a hostess um, girl to help with you know with um, basically getting people in and out of the system, and I can explain it this in like two minutes, and she can run it, and then they can just do that. So they can run four people basically, and um, you know you can operate it, so it doesn't take any any not much um, knowledge. So if you look at, so this is what it looks like, what we're doing with this um, platform at the moment. So just to give you a bit of an impression. So, and yeah, basically, so we have several games already on the platform. So what you see here is a shooter, like obviously first person shooter is really popular. Like this platform is not just gonna be shooters, so it's gonna be family entertainment and all kind of games. So it's just basically what we started with because it's obviously the most popular choice. So we're going with that. And you know, it's uh, basically we had people ranging from kids to, you know, uh, senior citizens and they all had a great time. I even, we had wheelchair guys in there and they loved it. So <laughs> it's, it basically works for everybody and everybody has a great time. So if you look at the market, so there's at the moment, there is really a lot of um, companies and they're obviously like probably the Void is the most popular. And their setups, they are like a million plus or in the case of your latency, like $800,000 plus. So they're really all serving the high end. And so this is what we're not doing with this platform. So this is serving the mid end. And um, so this is great because we can actually, we have a bit of a smaller footprint. It's obviously not as high end as these experiences. So it's the, we can't really compare, it's completely different. So there's free roaming experiences and we are more on a smaller uh, sort of space. At the same time, it makes really sense to have smaller platforms as well that can go into cinemas and family entertainment centers because uh, most of these platforms, they need like 200 square meters or something. And so a lot of, a lot of these uh, places don't actually have that. So this is really interesting. So when you compare a, 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 an a, um, attraction like this to laser tag, which has been the most grossing uh, attraction basically uh, so far, we can actually surpass this with something like this because people do pay for, for a great experience. 
So we can also see the platform for enterprise use. So obviously, like multi-user sort of things, is, uh, you know, there's a huge need for, for that as well, like especially uh, automotive or like um, re real, real estate sort of related things. So it's, uh, it's a huge thing. And obviously, we want to build bigger platforms as well when they get more affordable. So we offer, uh, with the system, we offer basically analytics and support, so there is no hassle for you basically uh, also after sales. And so we'll have content distribution like an app store inbuilt and all of that, which is coming next year. And then we will offer, as I already said earlier, different sort of um, types of titles, and it's an open platform so other developers can develop for this. And it's going to be geared for uh, arcades and esports and family entertainment. So this is basically the three, the three things we we think have basically sum up what what it, what, what it is really about. So yeah. So if you want to experience this, uh, we have one in Munich, and this is it's, it's at the Presence VR Center here in Munich. And um, I'm glad I made this in 10 minutes. So, <laughs> so you're more than welcome to ask any questions now.